Zoom. Gentleman from Oregon is recognized. I, I thank the gentleman and I thank him for his leadership. Um, I, I stand up today on this uh, bill and I, I actually intend to support it because I think uh, I may differ with my colleague from Washington about uh, some things, but the fundamental issue that I'm upset about is the notion that we can protect lands uh, somehow by never doing anything again on them. And, and, and certainly there are areas, and I've supported some of these new wilderness designations. I've tried to do it in a bipartisan way and tried to help. But doggone it, there are a whole bunch of other lands, the majority of the lands in our state, our federal forested lands that are completely out of balance with nature, that cry out for good stewardship and balanced management. And, you know, I hope Washington never has to catch up to Oregon when it comes to unemployment. And you get out in parts of my district in Eastern Oregon, and we are pushing 20% unemployment in county after county. And all too often, the biggest economic activity that occurs in the summer is not the harvesting of dead trees, it's the making of lunches for firefighters as catastrophic wildfire takes over. Now my colleague from Oregon, Mr. Schrader, and I are working on legislation with others, Mr. Hastings and others, that will allow us to go out into the forest and treat these lands. It is a crying shame and I think absolutely erroneous to argue that the only way you protect is to lock up and ignore. And this Congress under Democrat leadership, and with the good chairman who uh, took the gavel I used to have when I chaired the Forestry Subcommittee, I hope will actually give us a hearing on our legislation after it's introduced, and will actually give it due consideration. As in, give us a hearing, give us a markup, let us put it into law. Let's take the Healthy Forest Restoration Act that passed in an overwhelming bipartisan manner in both houses of this Congress and was signed into law in 2003, that has been very successful around our urban interface areas, the wildland urban interface, where we can go in and thin out the brush, work with the communities in collaboration and reduce the threat of catastrophic wildfire. Let's take those authorities that are now proven and workable and save taxpayers money because they're efficient and expand those out so we can protect watersheds so that we can get ahead of these bug infestations that are killing off enormous swaths of federal forest. And I don't sense that the chairman, I'd, I'd love to know if he'll take this up, I don't believe he supported the Healthy Forest Restoration Act uh, when it was before the House, but I, I, it just so frustrates the people I represent and others. that we may argue over a river here or something there, meantime the whole forest is dying not just in the northwest and on the east side, uh, pine forests, but you get in Colorado and look at the damage there. Members of both sides of the island, Colorado, have called for special initiatives to allow thinning there to get ahead of that bug infestation that's killing the pine. You look, frankly, what's happened across the border in Canada. These are enormous infestations. And if you're concerned about climate change, then you have to have understood that if the temperature is rising, the forest can't keep pace with the change. And so if you want to do something to protect the forest for the future, then you need to thin them out now to be able to get ahead of drought and further stress and further bug infestation. And in doing so, we can reduce the cost of the taxpayers because we'll, we'll get the forest back into balance and when they catch fire, it'll burn naturally and actually be fine. And by the way, we can put people to work and that's what this ought to be about. This house should be addressing how you actually use the resources we have in a manageable and responsible way to put people back to work, whether you're in John Day or you're in Prineville or you're in Baker City or out in, in, in Wallowa County. It's amazing the policies that have been put in place that restrict our access to our own forests that even are, are so... Uh, so tight, so restrictive, you can't even cut a burned dead tree while it still has value and run it through a mill and make a productive wood out of it, uh, lumber out of it. And, and no, we'd rather have some other country do that and then we'll import it. While our stuff stands there and rots. And then, oh, by the way, that becomes the breeding ground for the next expansion of some bug infestation. It'll take the next healthy forest. 
I mean, you drive around Subtle Lake in Central Oregon, tell me we couldn't have prevented the fire that destroyed things there. And I can show you where when the Forest Service was given the ability to thin, before this enormous fire a couple years ago, the trees that they thinned around lived. Where they were denied access to go in and do forest recovery work, it destroyed everything. Oh, it'll recover. None of us will probably be alive to see it. We might be, but you know, it shouldn't be that way. It doesn't have to be that way. And, and so while we debate this, this bill here today on, on the Malala River and the Willamette Valley, um, there's a bigger issue we should be bringing to this floor. And it is about how we are trusted with the stewardship of America's great forest, those reserves set aside in, beginning in 1905 by Theodore Roosevelt, who, by the way, when he did that in his speech in Utah, said the great purpose of the forest reserves is, first, water for agriculture, and second, home building. Now, most people don't attribute that to Theodore Roosevelt. You can go look up the speech in Utah, but that's what it was for. Now, obviously, there are things that we need to do in our forest for other purposes than those two, but clearly protecting watersheds is an essential stewardship obligation that this Congress for too long has, has, has not done enough to deal with. And, and part of it, sure, we can add more money here and more money there, and, and that can be good, and we can debate how much. And, but the real issue is the underlying law that needs to be fixed. So that our forest managers, our trained professionals, can go out and do what they were trained to do. Can you imagine, let's say, if you were a veterinarian? I don't know if there's any on the floor. Maybe Mr. Schrader. But if you were a veterinarian and you had to go through the process a forester has to go through to treat an animal, you might as well shoot it in the head. Because it's never going to survive long enough to get the treatment you know you need to prescribe. So, you know, let, let, let's be reasonable about these things. We've done it before in a bipartisan way. We can do it again before America's great forest reserves are, 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 go up in smoke and are destroyed. And you go back to that Colorado example when the Hayman fire occurred, that whole watershed, the pictures of the mud coming into their drinking water and the dead fish. We don't have to live that way. But simply making the argument, as one of my friends made, that, well, we're just behind the next state in terms of how much we set aside and don't ever do anything with and ignore is the wrong argument in my book. And so I would respectfully disagree with, with my friend from Oregon who made that argument. Because I don't think that's the measurement of good stewardship. The measurement of good stewardship is how you take care of it for the future, what you leave for the next generation. And that doesn't mean you never touch it again. It means active management where it's appropriate. It means saving our watersheds and the habitat for all God's creatures. And it, and it means, by the way, in doing so, we can figure out a way to turn biomass into energy and turn our natural resources into jobs. That's what we need. And it can be hand in hand, and it can be responsibly done. And I yield back. Gentlemen, yield back the balance of time. Gentlemen from Arizona. Thank you very much, and let me tell my friend uh, from Oregon, Mr. Weldon, that his comments are appreciated. I agree with you. There is a universal question about balance, restoration, and protection of our great forests, and uh, look forward to discussing those. Uh, let me uh, yield to the sponsor of the legislation, Mr.